Thank you. Uh, today is my honor to be here to present our work, Secret Farm Muscle, Enabling Secure Pairing with Electromyography. Uh, this is a joint work with my colleague Wei Wang and my supervisor Chen Zhang from HKUST. So today we have witnessed the rise of wearable devices. And those devices have penetrated in every part of our daily life and enabled many promising applications. For example, we can use my smart smartwatch to pay the bill, or I can track my physical training, record my daily activity, and even monitor my healthcare states. Among these promising applications, pairing is a very fundamental fun uh, function. However, since the data involved are often very private and highly sensitive, so pairing also poses several serious security issues. So consider an example of mobile payment. Before our smartwatch transmitting our credit card number and security code to the post machine, we want to make sure that the connection between these two devices is secure so that the transaction can be finished confidentially. Similar situ ha situation happens if we want to upload our personal or healthcare data to nearby devices like our mobile phone. So uh, making secu secure pairing becomes a very important problem. To this end, there are already a lot of existing brilliant solutions. However, they also have some weakness. For example, the conventional pink code cannot be widely adopted on wearable devices because those devices are very limited in size and the lack of convenient input method. Some research, uh, researchers also propose to leverage the wireless channel reciprocity or ambient environment like a sound or vibration. However, these solutions are threatened by an uh, active, actor, uh, active attacker who can intentionally manipulate with the signal stress or make some noise that in an unobstructed way. Also, nowadays we are surrounded by many civilian cameras or private cameras on our phones, so motion-based solutions are also vulnerable to camera-based attack. So to provide a better secure parent solution, we propose EMG key. This is a system that can securely pair wearable devices by using the electron migraine, migraine variation as a random source to generate a secret key. And this key can be used in further encryption or as a seed to generate more powerful keys. So in general, EMG is just an electric activity caused by our muscle contraction. And it has some very promising characteristics that enable us to use it, to use it as a random source. First, it, its variation is random. And also, we find out there's a biodiversity of a subject and the EMG changes over time. Also, we notice that the voltage of EMG signal is very small, so it requires physical contact in close proximity to sense it accurately. So, uh, Typical ex uh, application example for our system is the mobile payment. So if we want to create a connection between my smartwatch and the post machine, of course, it, both of them are equipped with EMG sensors. So I just simply put my arm on the post machine and perform a very sim simple gesture, like clenching of my fist for three seconds. Then the connection between them will be very safe. And there's uh, several advantages for this system. First, it only requires a low-cost EMG sensor, less than $10. And also, the gesture should be very easy. It's like clenching your fist. And also, due to the subtle characteristics of EMG, our system is very hard to be ever dropped. And also, it is totally OK if there's an attacker who is in nearby or even with a camera to see all, your, all the gesture you perform and we can generate a dynamic key which changes over time. So to build such a system, there are several questions. So the very first one is, is the EMG sufficient enough to serve as a random source? To answer this question, we need some medical background. So we know that our body consists of many muscles. For each muscle, it includes dozens of muscle fibers. 
and each muscle fiber is innerved by a neuron, and their contacting region is called end plates. So the neuron and the set of muscle fiber it innerves form the basic function unit of EMG, which is we term, which is called the motor unit. So how is EMG generated exactly? So when we want to make some gesture or movement, our nerve will generate an electric excitation, and it will fire this excitation towards the muscle fiber, and those excitation will cause the local depolarization at the muscle fiber, and so a series of complex biomedical reaction it will generate muscle fiber action potential, and those muscle action potential interact with each other and propagate along the muscle fiber and eventually can be captured by electrodes on the skin. That is what we call the surface EMG. So in this process, we, we have some observation. So it starts with the neuron, fires the excitation. So it has been proved by scientists that the firing pattern of neuron is quasi random. It means that also, uh, the firing rate will increase if we want to generate more force. However, the occurrence of each excitation is, sto is stochastic in nature. Also, it has been evidenced that the motor unit is independent. That means there's no correlation between their firing pattern. After that, uh, the excitation will arrive at the end plates. However, the geospatial distribution of these end plates will introduce some delay in the propagation of action potential, which can be formulated as a delta function here. And next, they will start to propagate. However, the propagation velocity depends on your muscle state, like the muscle fatigue level. And also, we use an electrode to collect those uh, electrical activities. So the transfer function about this electrode matters can be modeled as ET. So combine them together. Well, sorry for the format. We can get a model of this uh, EMG generation. And with this equation, since the, since the equation maybe should not incorrectly, so I just explain the inside we gain from this equation, such that we can find out, first, the number of recruit motor units is determined by the force. So it will vary, it will vary even under the same gesture. Also, we notice that the randomness of a system is guaranteed by the is guaranteed by the stochastic nature of firing patterns. Also, the user diversity in the end plate uh, distribution, conduction velocity, or the muscle fatigue level will also introduce additional discrepancy. And most importantly, is that EMG is very subtle, that it can only be sensed with physical contact in proximity. So to further validate those insights, we built a very simple prototype system uh, based on Arduino board and Omlix uh, EMG sensors. And we re recruit several volunteers. We ask some of them act as the legitimate user, while the rest simulates the attacker. In each experiment, we ask both user and attacker clenching their fist for three times. Here is an example of the resulting signal. First, we find out even for a single user, we can see three different clenches actually generate different EMGs. And also, we notice that even though there's a high correlation between user's uh, device and the payment device, there's still some discrepancy. More importantly, we notice that even they are performing the same gesture, since the force and the stochastic nature of the firing pattern, that the resulting EMG is totally different. So based on this, we, we are now ready to talk about our system design. In our system, it consists of four parts. First is data collection. We just leverage the existing commercial image sensors and perform some pre-processing to remove noise. Uh, this is just a common practice in signal processing. 
Next, we use the shape-based coding to generate secret bits from these signals. And also, we leverage the error correction code to eliminate, to eliminate the discrepancy between the secret bits. Okay. So this is just common practice. I just jumped then. So the first question is, how can we generate secret bits? So for the EMG, we first leverage a uh, window size is equal to T and divide them into different segments. For each segment, we predefine three basic shapes, like rise, stay, and drop. And we use a shape matching, matching method to find the most matching template for each segment. And we encode its template ID in, into the secret bits. So it will give us a well, it will give us a bit rate uh, one over uh, w times log three, and since we use two bit encoding, so the base is two. So now we have the secret bits, but the question is, due to the imperfection of hardware, also the propagation distortion between these devices, there are still some discrepancy between the secret bits. How can we eliminate these discrepancies? So the key idea is just we, we uh, transmit a partial information delta to another device B and let device B to uh, deduce a new key. And in that case, it can be matched. But how it's done, the key idea is, of this part is called reconciliation. So if we have a error correction code C with a parameter NKR, which it will encode N bit sequence into K bit message and to, resi to resist R bit errors and let the encryption function be F and uh, decryption function be G. And given two different key KA and KB, we can compute, uh, we, we know there's some difference between these two keys. And first, we can find a corresponding code word for this KA by applying the decryption and encryption. Uh, after that, we can compute a bitwise differences delta between the KA and its code word. By, using, by, trans, by transmit this delta to another part, uh, we, can, uh, we can theoretically prove that if the this difference between KA and KB is less or equal to the uh, error correction ability R, then the, the probability that KB uh, exclusive or with the delta will be will drop in the correction range of this code word. So based on this idea, we first generate delta as we mentioned before. And then we transmit this delta information to another part, and they can derive a new key, and this can be matched. However, however, please note that during this process, the secure pairing is not finished yet. So this delta information has to be transmitted on a public link. So there will be an information linkage. And it can be proved the linkage should be n minus k bits. So it will bring some bit rate loose to our system. So a valuable bit rate will be the original one times k, k over n. So for the evaluation, we use the prototype we mentioned before. We recruit 10 volunteers. Uh, seven of them are males and the rest are females. We ask nine of them to simulate the uh, legitimate user and the rest one act as the attacker. So we start with the bit generation rate. The question is how fast we can generate secret, secret bits before the reconciliation. It's apparently that the answer depends on the segmenting window size we use in the shape-based algorithm. However, we notice that if we use a very small window size, the entropy will be very low. This can be understood by considering an extreme case that the window size is very, very small, then Every shape in each segment can be approximated by a horizontal line. So we choose uh, 0.15 uh, as our 
as a balance point between the bit rate and the entropy. It will give us, oh, sorry, it will give us a bit rate before reconciliation around 10 bit, 5 bit, bit per, sec, per second. And also, since there's some information linkage in the uh, reconciliation part, so we employ different uh, error correction code like Hamming, Glay, or Reed Solomon. We find out that actually Glay give outperforms than the others. And according to the bit loss, uh, the final bit rate of our system is around 5 bit, uh, 5 1 bit BPS. And also, we use a standard randomness test provided by NIST to examine the randomness level of our system. Uh, this test suit uh, include a bunch of tests that examine the randomness from different aspects. And according to this uh, table, we find out the p-value of each test is signif significantly larger than 1%, which implies our secret key is sufficient random enough. And next, we evaluate some confounding factors. The first question is how close we need to place these two devices to ensure a secure pairing. Well, according to our experiment, we find out a secure distance uh, less or equal to four uh, centimeters will give us a good performance. Also, since our system requires user to perform some gestures, so the a natural question is whether a complex gesture can further improve the system security level. So based on this assumption, we designed three different uh, gestures. The first one is just clenching your fist and then release it again. And the second one is counting your finger from one to five. And the last one, gesture three, is the most complex one. However, we find out actually a simple gesture should be sufficient. And because it it introduced enough entropy in each symbol, and complex gesture actually did, did not bring any information gain. So simple gesture is sufficient. So now we talk about the thread model of our system. So uh, in this thread model, a user wearing a device A, and he won't click a connection with device B, and there's no pre-knowledge between this device A and B, so there's an attacker who is nearby that he can clearly observe and copy user's gesture. And also, he can get the package over a public link. That is the delta information we mentioned before. And also, he knows every detail of our parent aggression. So there's a strong attack this malicious, malicious user can perform. That is called copy attack. In this attack, the he can record the user's gesture with a camera, and he can capture all the packets over the wireless channel. Encrypt, uh, not, uh, also, he can perform some post-real analysis uh, by emitting the gesture and try to decode the security key in this, uh, used in this pairing. The first question is how much information can be learned if the attacker can perfect, uh, perfectly repeat user's gesture. We first choose the relation between user's device uh, and the payment device. In the left finger, we can, we can see that there's a clearly high correlation between user's waistband and the pay payment devices. However, there's no such strong correlation between attacker's device and the legitimate device. We further quantify this by computing their mutual information we find, okay. we find out they, they are, the mutual information between the legitimate users is four times larger than a attacker's device. Also, we further assume that if the attacker not only can uh, copy the gesture, but he can get the partial information delta we transmit over a public link, what is the probability that he, he can crack our system? According to our experiment, the average bit mismatching rate for user is around 8.92 times 10 to the minus 3 certain power. And also, we find out the bit mismatching rate 
of attacker is around 2 point, uh, 0 point, 0 0.298. And so if we consider a six di digit pin code that used uh, commonly today, so the probability that a user to perform a success pairing is around 83%. However, the probability that attacker can attack our system is only 0.09%. So this means the copy attack cannot be performed with the help under our system. So for the conclusion, so the EMG is a system that secure paired variable devices by using the electromyogram variation. And in this work, uh, we made several contributions. So uh, for now, as far as we know, we are the first one to explore the EMG to enable secure pairing. And our system can generate a random and dynamic security, uh, secret key. And it can defend the strong attacks. So that's it. That's my presentation. I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, Pong Yu from Stanford. Uh, yeah. Very nice talk. Thank you. Uh, can you give some comments about uh, for existing mobile payment system most of them, I think they are using the NFC near field communication. So can you, can you give some comments uh, to compare your system against the same NFC based solution? Okay. Um, actually, uh, nowadays a lot of wearable device does depends on the NFC. However, there are still some attack who can who can crack the NF system like I I can create some jamming uh, jamming signal to make those system does not work and also that's uh, if I can use some amplifier devices it is still possible that I can get a smash a partial information from the NFC based solution so I think that is a concern for the NFC uh, thank you. So I have another question. Mm -hmm. uh, does your system require a close connection between the electrodes and your skin uh, in yes. order to get a perfect EMG signal? Yes. Uh, according to our experiment, the security distance will be four centimeters. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm Danny from Tsinghua University. Mm -hmm. I have two questions. The first of all is: Is there enough entropy if the user does not perform any gesture? Uh, I'm sorry. I mean, if the user did not do anything on his, on his hand, there should be some signals already. Mm -hmm. Can you extract enough uh, randomness or entropy without doing any gesture? Uh, well, it's a very good question. Actually, if you do not perform any gesture, they do have some electric activity, but most of them are called ECG. That is the electricity signal from your heart. So those kind of signal. Also, there are some work to use those kind of signals, but. Maybe uh, I'm not familiar with that, but I think the maybe the EMG ECG pattern is repeatable, and maybe some information link. Okay. I guess. Thanks very much. The second question is about talking about information leaks. Is it possible for some attackers to get information from a little uh, from a proximity of the skin without touching it? Like some people just use some wireless sensors to get a similar entropy, similar entropy, so they they can attack the system. Um, well, uh, according to our experiment, if this attack, if, if it is not impossible, then it should be very hard because the EMG voltage is very, very small. So it has to, it definitely needs the physical contact to make sure you can get a very high quality EMG mm -hmm. signal. How about physical contact from the other hand or the upper arm? I mean, at the other part of the body? I think if uh, maybe the another part does not work because uh, the, we, we are, our body are consists of muscles. So if we, another part, then the EMG from different muscle will dominate the signal. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, David Coates from Dartmouth. Um, two questions. You mentioned an effective bit rate of 5.5 .5 bits per second, I think. Mm -hmm. So in order to transmit or agree on a 128-bit key, that'll take 23 to 30 seconds. Yes. That seems like a long time for me to, ha to hold my fist while I'm trying to pay for my latte or something like that. Did you experiment with the duration that it takes and people's acceptability for that? Well, um, yes, we acknowledge that the bit rate for now is kind of low. So we think maybe the best usage for our system, can we can generate such kind of 
secret bits and use it as a seed to generate more powerful encryption keys. And, and also maybe the, for now we only use uh, one channel of EMG, maybe multi-channel EMG can help that. Okay, mm -hmm. the second question, you said that uh, EMG is inexpensive, maybe $10. Mm -hmm. So for a payment terminal, $10 is a lot of additional cost. And as you may know, in the United States, all vendors have recently changed their payment terminals and are unlikely to want to do that again. So yeah. do you have other <laughs> applications where this might be more um, immediately useful? Well, uh, actually, uh, we think about it a lot. Uh, from my perspective, I, I think maybe First, the EMG is kind of increasing important because it provides a new interface with, uh, interact with those devices. Many uh, research from the CHI uh, area, they propose to use EMG and they also, also there are a lot of wearable devices now equipped with EMG uh, sensors. And maybe since our system targeted at a better security level, so maybe we, 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 sh we can consider some situation we, require higher level, and maybe the cost is not that, that important. Like uh, doorknobs, for example, something yeah. you have to touch anyway. Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hi, th Hello. Hi, thank you for your nice presentation. I'm Shoma from TCS Research and Innovation. Mm -hmm. I have the question regarding your pre-processing, because mm -hmm. uh, from the noisy EMG, you were performing the pre-processing, and thereafter you were getting a pattern, right? There mm -hmm. is a steep rise and then stay and then the falling down. So how accurate and what, what technique you are using this pre-processing or the noise removal? Because that mm -hmm. leads to the generation of the code. And the whole, yes. uh, your techniques depends on that code, code and the sharing of whatever the presentation you have given. Mm -hmm. Thank you, it's a good question. Uh, for the pre-processing, uh, pre actually we just apply a few uh, high pass filter or notch filter. Those are common practice in synchronous processing. For example, we notice that most of the noise came from body motion or the friction between the friction between the electrode and the skin and the energy are less than 20, uh, 15 hertz. So we just use a high pass filter to remove those noise. And also there are some power line noise, so we just use notch filter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. So what are the accuracy? Do you have measured the accuracy of your pre-processing? Uh, actually, uh, the, the pre-processing does not matter much in our system because the trick of our system is pairing. So we only want to make sure that both devices have the same observation or the same measurement about the EMG signal. And we actually does not require a very high quality EMG signal because we are not trying to de derive any information from EMG and we only to use it as a parent key. So we want to okay. make sure they are similar, should be okay. enough. Thank you. Okay, thank you. More questions? Thanks, everyone. Oh, there's no question. Okay. So, uh, since you are using both device, both mm -hmm. devices to capture one gesture, how do both devices know when the gesture starts or ends? Okay, that's a, actually uh, this um, is more like a practical problem. So, when you perform a, when there's no EMG, the signal is re relatively small. So, when you perform some gesture, there are a sharp increase and drop. So we use that just a simple thread based to detect the star of the system. Yeah. Okay, that works. Thanks. Mm 